Ultra Video Pirate T. Oi, I wanted to make this video showing you how to configure a Cisco IP phone 7960 with VoIP.ms. VoIP.ms is a bring it your own device VoIP service provider. And I obtained three of these Cisco IP phones. And what you want to look for first is SIP. If you notice in the upper right hand corner it has SIP, that means it's already configured for SIP. So I did not have to reinstall the firmware. And nothing like that. I didn't have to set up a TFTP server. If you do not see the SIP, it could be that it's configured not to work for SIP and you what you have to do, it's a long process which I'm not going to get into in this video, but you will not be able to configure it right away until you get into SIP mode. Okay, so click on the settings. Settings gets you into the main menu and then to set it up with VoIP.ms, we're going to go down to the SIP configuration. That's number four. Click select. We're going to go into line one, but before we go into line one, I want to show you some network settings that may cause you not to be able to receive incoming outgoing calls. You want to make sure that the preferred codec is G711 ULAW. You want to have register with proxy selected? Yes. Also, you see the register expires? You want to change that to 180. And I will show you how to edit these menu items. TFTP directory. Now make sure that your VoIP control ports are the same. And I would recommend that you just set them to the default 5060, except for the start media port and the end media port. Those will be different, but the other ones should be 5060, or if you change them, they should be the same. Backup proxy. You do not need a backup proxy. Do not enable that. It might cause it not to work with VoIP.ms. If there is something filled in there, delete it out. The backup proxy port 5060, that's fine. Unprovisioned, that's fine. Emergency proxy port 5060, outbound proxy. Same thing with the outbound proxy. If there's anything filled in there, delete it out and then don't enter in anything. The outbound proxy port is 5060. NAT enabled, you can set that to yes. So I just wanted to show you, there, because when I had this phone, the outbound proxy was configured and I had to delete that out because it was causing it not to make call, calls out. But make sure the other ports are, are the same except for the start and end media ports are gonna be different, but the rest of the ports should be 5060 or if you change them, they should all be the same. So let's go back. Oops, now let's, we have to unlock the phone in order to make changes. You see where it says unlock config? Select that, it's number nine. Click on select. The default password on Cisco IP phones is just Cisco. So I don't wanna get the, the lights are, are, they're, anyways. So Cisco, uh, damn it. I don't know why it does that once in a while. I might have hit the wrong key. So hit select, Cisco, and then you have to keep pressing the button until you get to the letter that you want. That's how these keys work. And then when you get to the letter, you depress the key. You take your thumb off of it. CI and then S. It's a little bit, it can be a little bit harrowing, but once you get the phone configured, it is well worth it and you shouldn't have to mess with it again and then one more letter okay now click accept to accept the password now your phone is unlocked now we're gonna go back up to the SIP configuration and we're gonna make the changes so that you can use it with VoIP VoIP.ms so select Select line one this time. Now, if you had to make changes down below, you have to unlock the phone just like I showed you. You want to make, the this phone w was set up to 3600 expires. I changed it to 180, which is what VoIP.ms recommends. So that might be the only change that you have to make. Just depends on how the phone was configured when you received it. You, I always just put the, the name the same as the authentication. VoIP.ms will give you a number and that will be your authentication name. It's actually a number, at least when I got the service. I just put the same name just to, so I know what phone or what device I'm using. 
I'm not going to show you my password, but if you if you need to make changes, we'll just choose this one. Click on edit. And if there was something pre-filled in there that you want to change, you cannot hold down the back arrow. It won't you have to keep keep pressing back. And then you put in the numbers and the same thing. You might have to press the number more than once until you get to the one that's desired. And then Okay, we'll get there. Just be patient. And then finally, hit accept to accept that. And then I'm not going to show you my authentication password, obviously, but you would you would go in and fill in the name. The short name doesn't matter. I'm going to change that later. Authentication name is extremely important. That is the username that you use to register with VoIP.ms. And the authentication password is important. That's what you use to log in. So those two you're going to change. The display name doesn't really matter for now. You can change that to anything you want. The display name is up here. When you go back, when the phone is just, uh, when you exit out of this menu, it's these keys are labeled. That's what the display name means. The proxy address is important. It depends on what proxy address you're using with VoIP.ms. I'm in Denver, Colorado, so I choose Denver.VoIP.ms. And you would go in there, and you would hit Edit, and you would, you know, back delete everything out and then enter in which one you want to use. There's Atlanta, New York, Chicago, etc. VoIP.ms, the you use the city dot VoIP.ms. And on these keys, the star is the dot. You would just press the the star once. Here I can back up. So you've got the VoIP. I'm gonna have to ha enter in the P again. And then just press the star once. That's the dot. And then, um, so if you're wondering where the dot is at, I thought it might have been here, the pound or the one, but it's actually the star. Then click accept so that it accepts what you just changed. And then it'll take you back to this menu. And then the proxy port is important. If you have multiple devices, you're going to have to, I think, choose a port for each de device otherwise they will overlap each other you might have to change that to 5080 or something else on another phone well I use my Android that I'm recording I also use VoIP.ms with it and I set I configured another 7916 it would not call out until I changed the proxy port to 5080 that's because they were they were overlapping they have to have de separate dedicated ports, otherwise they'll talk over each other. So click back. I don't think there's anything else here. Is there one? Is there? I showed you all those settings. I think there's one in network. You might want to change in network. Is you? That's my DHCP server, and that's my little Wi-Fi router with the switch. And what you want to do is you want to connect this in the middle, in the middle connector. You see how there's a one on the right for a PC? You want to plug it into the middle one for a networking device, either a hub, a switch, a router, etc. Now, in this network setup, as long as you have a DHCP server on your network and it has internet access, then this phone... As long as you set it up to DHCP, it will get an IP address. So, but I, I just showed you just the VoIP.ms settings, but you might have to change these to your your DHCP server. My, as you can see, it mine already gets a domain name. It already gets an IP address, subnet mask. Now, this is what you might want to change. Originally, when I received this phone, it had a 159. Blah blah blah. So. The TFTP server, you do not have to have necessarily, but I would, if, if you receive the phone and it has some other IP address that's not on your network, you might want to change it to something local on your network. It'll time out. It'll time out, but, you know, I just thought it would be good. Now, in the future, you could in install a TFTP server and then point to it, but you do not have to have a TFTP server for the phones to work. If you get the pa if the password's locked, what you can do is you can configure this to point to your TFTP server, and then you can create a config file on the TFTP server with the Cisco password. So, if somebody changed the 
the Cisco password from Cisco to something else, you can resolve that by doing what I just did. So you might want to, you might have to change these, or you have to configure these for DHCP. But this phone was already set up for DHCP. And the one thing I changed was I changed the TFTP server because it was pointing to some other IP address. So I just decided to point it to something internal. It'll still, it'll time out. If you do not have TFTP server running, the phone will time out. But it does look for the TFTP server because that's how you can flash the, the firmware. That's how you can reinstall the firmware. So everything else looks good. You, you might have to mess around with these settings. I didn't. D, this is what you want to make sure. In order, if you want this phone to, to use DHCP, here's where you change it. You would change, if it's set to no, you would change it to yes. And, or if you don't want DHCP, you would set it to no. And then at the top, you would manually set static addresses. But I, I have a DHCP server, and so it works with these with my Android that uses SIP, VoIP.ms, so I also got this phone to work. Okay, so you probably don't need to change anything else here, but I just wanted to show you this network menu just in case you needed to change settings. So we now that I showed you how to configure the SIP configuration, both for, you know, VoIP.ms and then those other settings just in case you, you need to, now we're going to go back and now we're going to make a test call and I I will hit the speakerphone new call I'm making a local call welcome to the weatherline forecast there you go so that's how you configure a Cisco IP phone 7960 to work with VoIP.ms I just want to go over the basics where you need to go at on, on the phone to get to the SIP configuration so that you can enter in your authentication name and password and then the other settings that VoIP.ms recommends. If you have any questions, if for whatever reason your phone does not register or it won't make outgoing calls or it doesn't receive incoming calls but doesn't make outgoing calls, I might be able to help you with your situation if you just enter in a question in the description in the comment section of this video because I looked into this and there's some articles on the internet but hopefully I helped you enough that you can get your Cisco 7960 configured with VoIP.ms to make outgoing and incoming calls adios tip me tip me via PayPal, PayPal me, my contribution form at my website, anacomputers.com, super chat on a live stream, and or sign up to become a Patreon on my Patreon page. Adios.